talk in front of a large crowd, but not a crowd composed of uh, so young people, so uh, if I uh, say anything that you don't understand, by all means, you know, raise your hands. I want this to be like interactive, because when, uh, with Abishai here, when he invited me over here, and I'd like to thank all the people actually who, who run this event, etc., um, for kindly inviting me here. When, when I was invited here, I was told, you're going to be speaking to... Um, a lot of our children who come to the madrasa and the whole point of it is is to kind of motivate these students try to inspire them because you're all at this age where I know you're all very young and you're all you, you haven't progressed very far in life but it's these young ages where you start to think about what you want to do what you want to become when you grow older and it's not that far away you'll have to make decisions what, what, what would I like to do and that's probably one of the reasons why um, so many different people are invited here so that they can come and they can tell you about themselves they can say well I'm a dentist and I look at people's teeth all day or I clean people's teeth or, or I'm a police officer I have to be you know uh, on, the, on the street at night making sure that everything's safe so they give you a flavor of what kind of things different people do so today you've got me to talk to you and as I've been introduced I, I, I teach at university so I'll just tell you a bit about myself and then hopefully, if you've got any questions, if you'd like to ask me something, and by all means, don't be shy to ask questions. One of the best things you can do in life is to ask lots of questions, especially if you ask good questions, because that's how you learn. You learn, the best way to learn is to ask questions, especially constructive and you know, really good questions. Think about what it is that you want to understand. Whoever is speaking to you, whatever you're learning, try your best to think, okay, well, I don't understand this aspect of this thing, or I'm not sure about this, so maybe I should ask, and you should ask, okay? So I'll tell you a bit about myself. I mean, I'm, I was actually brought up in Birmingham, so I live not very far from here, not in Hansworth. I think most of you are from Hansworth. I come from an area called near Small Heath. Some of you may be familiar with it. Does anyone know where Small Heath is? Yeah. Um, okay. The both the green. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly where I live. My uncle lives there. Okay, okay, so I live exactly where your uncle lives then, okay? Um, so I went to school there. Um, and I went to college after school, you got college, and then I went to university, and then I did my degree, and after my degree, we do something called a PhD, that's like a higher degree. What, what happens in that time is you spend three years where you write a book, okay? So it's, you, you don't do anything in that three years except just do work in terms of research. You just research one particular topic you take, because you've studied so much, by then you'll have studied for over 10 years in your area, so whatever it is, I chose mathematics and it's slightly related to physics as well, and I'll talk about what I did. Um, but you choose an area that you really like, that you, you're, in, you're very interested in, and by then you've learned as much knowledge as there is to learn about that area. There's nothing left for you to learn, so now you have to increase knowledge. So after knowing everything there is to know, then you actually write a book about it, so you say, this is what I've done, and you take knowledge a bit further. So your work will be the first, you have to produce original research. Original means that no one else has ever done this ever before. So in a sense, it's really exciting. It's like being an explorer, where you've got to go to different places, and you get to see new things that people have never seen before. So it's very exciting, and it's very interesting. And you write this book, and it obviously has your name on it, and it's your area of research. So you become a specialist in this area. Now, why did I want to become a university lecturer? I, I wasn't much older than you lot when I actually wanted to become a, well, not necessarily a university lecturer, but I was really interested in doing a PhD. Because the way I saw it was that I want to learn as much as I can in this area. I really loved mathematics. You all do mathematics at school, don't you? Yeah? Yeah? Does anyone like mathematics here? Okay, I see, I see there's lots of enthusiasm in this crowd for mathematics. Yeah? Well... If I, if I, I'll try to make this interactive because we do have a bit of time. Uh, does anyone want to tell me what they really love about mathematics? I don't know your name, so I'm sorry, I'll just have to point out. It's not necessarily 
So you start with the blue uh, top. Yeah, it's blue indeed. Like, um, um, the work that it takes to solve something. Yeah. So you, you mean you enjoy working hard to solve a problem? Yeah. Yeah? Anyone else? Oh, I love like, uh, algebra and all that solving problems with numbers and letters. Solving problems. Uh, and you, you mentioned algebra, yeah? And you actually think the word algebra itself, it comes... I mean, we are very fortunate. We're all Muslims here. And it comes, yeah, a lot of mathematics, it comes from Muslims from the past. They did a lot of work and we owe them a lot of gratitude because they preserved a lot of things from the Greeks, etc. And they created new ideas themselves. So we're, as Muslims, we ought to be proud of these concepts. Yes, um, I'll come, come to the back as well. But. Um, making stuff and finding squares and creating a class to see. Okay, so geometry. Okay, that's called geometry. Maybe you haven't heard that word. It was about shapes and, and different objects and properties to later. So the perimeter, area and all that. So you, you're coming to that. Someone from the back, your hands up with the black uh, hoodie. Pardon? It's challenging. It's challenging. Exactly. That's another concept. You know when something's really easy, it gets boring after a while, doesn't it? Yeah. You know if I told you, like, can you just, I don't know, take off your shoes? Yes. You know, after a while, you're going to say, that's too easy. I mean, you know, it's not challenging, is it? But if I say, can you, I don't know, uh, run a mile in less than four minutes, that's a challenge because, you know, no one's done it like that or not for a long time. So these things are more challenging. The more challenging something is, the more interesting it is. Yeah. We'll stop here, but I just want to get a handful of people, but thanks for participating anyway. But it's these ideas, some of the things that you're just saying, these are the reasons why I decided to become a, a lecturer and pursue research because research the whole point of doing research is you you learn as much as there is to learn about an area it doesn't matter what that area is I mean I chose mathematics you could choose physics you could choose astronomy you could choose medicine you could choose some Islamic science like tafsir of the Quran or hadith but we just had a beautiful recitation just before I started you could become an expert in recitation the point is, you learn as much as that you, is there to learn about that topic. You dedicate yourself to it, and then you master that topic. So this is what drove me to become what I am now, alhamdulillah. So I was very committed to, to learn as much as I could about my area. So now let's move on to what I do, because a lot of you must think, I have teachers at school, I'm sure you do. And you think, well, I know what they do, they just stand in front of the class, and then they write things on the board, and then they tell us, what those things are. In university, things are slightly more different. We do do classes, we do have students that are a lot older than yourselves, and we teach them things, more complicated things, yeah? Uh, but we do other things as well, and coming back to this research, I do a lot of research with different people around the world. So I've, I'm working with a group in Chicago, in America, on something called a fuel cell. Now, fuel cell, a lot of you won't have heard of this, but it's a special type. Have you heard of it? What is it? It's in fuel. No, no, not cell, as in S E L L. Fuel cell, as in C E L L. So that's like a battery. It's like a battery. It's a special battery. You know, batteries, they operate, they use chemical properties to convert into electricity. But a fuel cell is very special because if you have a fuel cell car, you don't need to put petrol into that car. Yeah? It uses air and hydrogen and oxygen and the only output, you know the exhaust pipe, you have these harmful gases that are polluting the atmosphere, some people believe, you get pure water and no harmful gases, so it's very good, it's very clean uh, fuel. So I'm working with them on that, this problem, I'm doing a lot of research etc on this area. I also work with different groups, some from Saudi Arabia, some from Malaysia and India, we work on various different problems. So. My PhD, the thing that I specialized in was how do droplets form? You know droplets, you see them all the time, you know, in terms of your tap. So there's a lot of theory behind this. I'm not going to go into this. I'm not here to like, give you a boring lecture about science or anything. But I'm just telling you a bit about what I do and how I spend my time. So a lot of my time is spent teaching, supervising students. Because at university, you have big classes like this. But you also have very small classes where you have one-to-one -one sessions with your teacher. So uh, people who are doing PhDs, I supervise them, so I get to spend one hour every week with them. And 
it's a kind of one-to-one -one tuition, but it's slightly different from that too. And I also travel a lot. I get to go to different places, do research, talk to people, experts in the areas. I also write articles in journals, etc., contributing to knowledge, etc. So there's a lot of things that I do. It's, it's, it's a shame I couldn't show you some of the pictures because it'd be wonderful, because I'm actually based at the University of Birmingham, which isn't that far away. Um, but apart from that, what I'll do is I'll stop here. I know I'm slightly early, but I'll open it up to everyone. Is there any questions you'd like to ask me? Anyone? Is the University of Birmingham that one stop? Pardon? One stop? Yeah, bike. No, that's um, Birmingham City University. Yeah? But they're both quite similar in terms of they have the symbol of a lion in here. But Birmingham University is based in Edgbaston. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Edgbaston? You seem to know all of Birmingham very well. Are you, are you a taxi driver? You try to drive people around. No? 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to school by Edgbaston. What is it? King Edward, is it? Um, the Pyro. The Pyro. That's right next to the university. Yeah, no. That's very good. So, how old are you? Um, 11. 11. And mashallah, that's very, very good. Yeah. I mean, it's a very good you know, uh, school that is. It's one of the best schools in the country. So, so I'm, I'm very happy to see that uh, students from this Madrasa are actually go to such a, such a well-established and respected uh, school. Well done. You've done very well today. You know. Anyone else want to ask me questions? You have questions? teach at high school. Do I teach at high school? Uh, no, because that's GCSE. I teach at university. Anyone else? You in the blue? My school, um, they um, offer 20 children in year 6 to do the GCSE mathematics. Your school is giving everyone opportunity to do mathematics early? Yeah. And are you amongst one of them? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's very good, mashallah. Um, I'm, you know, I came here and I was very happy, but now I'm actually a lot happier now that I've heard how well and how successful everyone is. So mashallah, you've done very well. You should be very happy yourself. From the girls, someone from the back, we'll give you a beige scarf. How did you get a PhD? That's a very good question. You have to study a lot because remember what I said about PhD? PhD is something that you can only get once you've learned as much as there is to learn about a particular area. So say you want to get a PhD in biology. You have to not only learn GCSE biology and get a good mark from it. You have to do A-level biology, you have to do a degree in biology, and you have to do a master's in biology, and then you can get a PhD. So it's a lot of learning, almost 10 years worth of learning at least, and then you can, once you get a PhD, it means, in a not arrogant way, but you will know, you will be amongst the most knowledgeable in that area. There wouldn't be anyone in the UK who will know more about that specific area than you. That's how knowledgeable you become. So you have to learn a lot. That's how you get a PhD. You do very well in your studies and choose a particular area and just keep doing it and do as much as you can. So more, you with the uh, bright floral head. My parents, uh, my father, I mean, I was born in Bangladesh. I was born here when I was 18 months. My mom, um, doesn't, she's not, she doesn't have a job really, she's like a housewife, if you like. And my father, uh, when he came here a long time ago, he used to work, he used to work in a factory. So, and he passed away when I was very young. When I was about eight, he, he passed away, he died. So, uh, so, um, so that's what my parents did. And my mom's still alive, she's quite old. Yeah. Yeah. She was asking, why did your parents want you to be telling Oh, sorry, yeah. <coughs> uh, I didn't quite get the question. I thought you asked about my, about my parents. My parents didn't uh, influence me in terms of education too much because they, they, were, they pushed me to do well, but they didn't have specific ideas exactly what I should become. Because I went to an inner city school, and the school is, today things are a lot better. You have teachers who are pushing you to do well. In the past, things were always like that. We had teachers who, they were good teachers, but they wouldn't always push us so much. So, you know, it wasn't quite clear what I would become or what people would do. But that's a good question. Uh, someone, I've already asked you, I'll come back to you, but someone from the back would be something. Yeah? What is the name of the book? My book? Yeah. Uh, it has a really long name, but uh, it's called An Investigation into Methods to Control the Breakup of Liquid Jets. Um, <laughs> 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 It's, 
it's a long name, I mean, uh, and it's going to be very complicated. You know, you pick it up, you just go to sleep, because, you know, there'll be all these weird symbols in there. But from the uh, front, one, do you want to ask another one? What does PhD stand for? PhD, that's a good question. PhD stands for, it's from the Latin, yeah? It, it actually is, the D comes first, so the D represents doctorate. That's why you become a doctor. Once you get a PhD, you don't be a mister or a missus or a miss. You get the title of DR, so you'll be called doctor, okay? And that's why it's called doctorate. And the PH part, PH, that comes from the word philosophy. So in the past, Everything used to be called philosophy, whether it's science, mathematics, medicine, history, everything used to be called philosophy because that's what learning and that's why PhD, doctorate in philosophy. You with the blue? Your name has a doctor in it. Yeah, it does. Anyone else? Um, okay, I'll come, I'll come to you like this. I'll do the base. about the question, what do you mean by the question levels, I think? Like, there was this, like, in um, a primary school, like, there was a level of Oh, okay. Um, in the university, you have different years, so there's year one, year two, year three, and year four, okay? They don't work towards levels, it's just, you take exams, and you get graded on those exams. So it's not quite like SATs or anything like that, it's slightly different. You, you just do your year, so if it's the first year, you go in, you do the first year exams, it's called first year exams, and whatever you get, you get. There's four grades, the best is a first class degree, it's a first class, it's 70% or higher. The next best is a, quote, an upper second, so it's 60% or more, up until 70 obviously. And then it's an upper lower second, which is 50% to 60%, and the last classification is called a third class degree, which is 40% to 50%. So, depending on how well you do, you're going to get a different classification, okay? Uh, someone I haven't asked you, they will hand right up. What do you get if you get lower than 40? If you get lower than 40, you, it's complicated because you get a degree after the three years. So, you, you take your exams in every year. Depending on how many exams you've got less than 40 or not, you'll either get a pass, just a pass, or you could fail. If you don't get 40s a lot, 40s or more, you're going to fail your degree. Okay? You've already asked two, so I'm going to ask someone else. Uh, you haven't asked a question. Is GCSEs harder than the SATs? They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be. Are you finding them harder than. Uh, are you finding your GCSEs harder than your SATs? Is that being the SATs? Oh, you're not doing that. Well, it's just a random question. No, they shouldn't be, they shouldn't. If they are, then it's a bit worried. Okay? Uh, you, I'll come back to you. Uh, I'll try to address all the questions. You with the um, jacket, you know. You know, you're secondary school. Was it normal or was it a secondary school? It's a school called Salt Lake School. Uh, I don't know if you know why it's in both green. It's, it's like a normal secondary school. State. State, yeah, state school. Yes, what grades you get? What grades and what? Uh, what like GCSEs? I got mostly A stars. And A's. But in those days, things were slightly different. So, you know, we're talking about 14, 15 years ago. I took my GCSEs in 1999. So that's, that's 14 years ago. That's a long time ago. Uh, I'll, I'll let someone uh, more mature uh, ask a question inside. Just, just a sort of interest on you know. Uh, I have got a beard. Yeah. But, you know, working in the environment that you work in, how challenging is it? Um, there's always challenges. I mean, as Muslims, we live in an environment where we're always going to be faced with challenges. But in the particular environment where I work in, in university, I think, alhamdulillah, things are a lot better than they would be elsewhere. The reason is people have a mutual respect. There's always going to be problems, but it's better than other place because people have this mutual respect for knowledge, these things are moving forward, and I've found it, I've been quite blessed, alhamdulillah. I've never found major issues. There's always been other occasions where I've felt maybe because I'm a Muslim, because I'm practicing, that uh, maybe I'm slightly discriminating against, but I've got to say, I, I thank Allah that in my case, I've, I find it to be very good. 
Uh, would it be fair to say then that I mean, despite you uh, practicing Muslim, you know, it hasn't hindered you to actually make much progress as you would have wanted? Mm. No, I wouldn't. I, I would say that. No, I would say that's generally true. I'd say that I, I've been blessed in in many things in my life, but one of the things is it is important who you are connected to. So, as a PhD student, you have a supervisor, like I supervise the students now, and it depends on that supervisor as well. And the people around you, I've had very good people, non Muslims, who've supported me a lot, senior people. And if that wasn't always the case, maybe then things would have been quite different. There's so many things, so many factors. But I would say personally, uh, my practicing of my religion hasn't had, uh, hasn't had any noticeable effect on my career, as far as I can see. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and you all seem very eager. Come on, you got it calm down. Okay, okay, you can ask me a question. I've got two questions. First one, what is the last level? The last level? Only. It's like PhD. There's nothing about PhD. Like level one, level three. It, like I said, it, if someone asked us this question, there is no levels once you go to university. There's classifications of degree, first class degree, upper second, and then there's PhD. And PhD, nothing is about PhD. And now, second question is, when you were small, what was your favorite thing? Like, favorite what? Thing, like, thing. Um, <laughs> Mathematics. No, I used to like running a lot. I mean, it sounds really strange, but I used to love running. I used to, uh, I mean, I, people aren't so active anymore, but I used, to, I used to run everywhere. I used to run in school. We used to play football a lot. I used to really love that. I used to always go home with, uh, I used to have a damaged uh, jeans, and my shoes used to get, trainers used to get, and my mom used to hate me playing football. And then after about a few years, I just gave it up because this used to cause me, I damaged my knee as well playing football, but I still love football. But did you, did you like playing video games? I played a few video games, I mean like all kids, but I wasn't very interested in video games. So. <laughs>